Happy Thursday, everybody. My name is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church. I'm calling this to not contemplate that thought could kill you and no one is exempt. It's very important to guide your mind because the most dangerous weapon I know of is a thought. Yes, the most dangerous weapon that I know of is a thought. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Desire is so dangerous because whatever you put desire on, eventually you will go after. That's because a desire lies in the thoughts of man. And when you take that thought and you put it in your bosom, it begins to resonate in the mind enough that it makes you perform an action that you wouldn't necessarily want to perform. So you may ask why I go to church. What does this topic have to do with anything? I go to church to gird up my mind. And when I read the word, when I read the scriptures, I'm able to see how there is truly nothing new under the sun and it can happen to anybody, anybody. No one is exempt. So during my study time, God brought back to my remembrance the story of Elijah the prophet. Now, Elijah the prophet was a bad mamma jamma. Elijah the prophet was so powerful, so gifted, so anointed that he actually, hey, Sister Ashley, he actually took on 850 prophets. He took on 850 prophets. Elijah was so tough that he caused it not to rain. Elijah was so gifted that when the hand of God was upon him, he outran the horses. So I'm talking about somebody that was sitting next to God's heart, somebody that spoke to God. So I'm not talking about somebody that just went to church on a peripheral basis. I'm talking about somebody that actually communed with God, somebody actually that performed the works of God, and somebody that actually was used by God. Elijah was so powerful that he called down fire from heaven, and he burnt a sacrifice on the altar that was wet. That's how powerful Elijah was. Elijah was powerful. Elijah was just that powerful. So what does Elijah have to do with what I'm talking about? Well, Elijah, he lived in a time period when there was a king by the name of Ahab, and he had a wife by the name of Jezebel. Now, Jezebel was a wicked queen. She had an evil spirit and she went around persecuting the people of God. Jezebel was so tough against the people of God that many feared her, their very life. What I'm telling you is the most dangerous thing is a thought. So Elijah, this anointed man of God, this person that spoke with God on a consistent per basis, the man that was able to call fire down from heaven, the person that outran horses, contemplated suicide. He actually, when God, the angel came and spoke to him, he said, I'm sitting under this tree and I want to die. Now we say to ourselves, how can people that are called of God, how can people that talk to God, how can people that move in the manifestation of God and, I've, and people see it from the outside world, how can this man be depressed? How could this man tell God who he knows is real that I just want to die? I told you from the beginning, the most powerful weapon is a thought. The word says, be aware of the enemy devices. And one of the enemy's devices is thoughts. One of the enemy's devices is words and words that are left unchecked will kill you. Words that are left unchecked will cause you to contemplate on something that doesn't exist and make it more than something else. Because what I want to share with you is that Elijah, as he called down fire, as he showed off on these 850 prophets, he heard the word come out of Jezebel's mouth and she basically stated, 
I'm going to do to you like I've done to the other people. Your head, I'm going to have your life. Now think about this. She said that she was going to have his life. She didn't actually send anybody at the time. She just said it. And Elijah took the words of Jezebel and he ran and he went and hid himself in a cave. So please don't tell me the power of words because I can just think in my mind that Elijah began to think about what had happened. He began to think about what had happened to the other people of God. But what he did was take his eyes off the word of God and the anointing of God that was on his life. Because if he would have just sat down and thought about what God was, he wouldn't have to worry about what Elijah uh, Jezebel's words were. He just defeated all of these people. He just had done all of these supernatural things. But her words caused him, caused him to run for his life. Jezebel used words to send the man of God running. And what I want you to know that that same spirit that Jezebel has is still loose in the earth. And what the enemy is doing is loosening demonic prophecy over people. And it is actually causing you to contemplate, do you want to live? What I want to tell you today that you can live because the word says what God is blessed, no man can curse. What the word said is what God has blessed, no man can curse. But when you read the word, what you will discover is that Balaam, he couldn't curse the people. But what he could do is cause the people to sin against themselves and take fire within the bosom. And that would cause a curse because the word says a curse without a cause can't come. The word says a curse without a cause can't come. So be aware of the enemy's devices. So stop picking up the things that the enemy placed before you because you might be the very one that is causing, causing a curse to come in your life. You may not want to believe me today, but some of you are cursing yourself because you have picked up things that you knew were the enemy's devices. Not only did you pick up the thing that was the enemy devices, you actually laid down with the thing that was the enemy's devices. Some of us are being like Sansom and Lan, our hat, our heads in the lap of Delilah. Some of us are actually partaking of food that the God told us not to partake of. Some of us are drinking from the cup of iniquity and then we ask God to help us. But what I want to tell you is that a curse without a cause will not come. But if you consume a thought long enough and you take action and let it burn in your bosom, you will want to kill yourself. It don't matter how gifted you are. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how much you moved in, um, um, under God's power. If you contemplate those demonic prophecies, if you contemplate those thoughts of suicide and you give over to them, you will want to kill yourself. So here is a man that wanted to kill himself. But what is so powerful about this story is that the devil had him isolate himself. He was alone. He was contemplating his thoughts in his own mind. He wasn't amongst the family. He, he was failing to assemble himself with the body of believers because he went into a cave all by himself. So when the devil sends these demonic thoughts, what he will get you to do is isolate yourself and get yourself in a cave. And then he will, he will get you to begin to think of us that no one knows the trouble that I'm in, that no one's been where I've been. And I'm the only one. God, why have you put me in this predicament? What the devil wants to do is isolate you to destroy you because he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the first thing that he comes to do is separate you from the people of God. Because if he can separate you from the people of God, he can steal the word from you. And once he steals the word from you, he can kill you because he begins to take the faith from you. And when he takes the faith from you, he takes the hope from you. And when he takes the hope from you, you don't want to live. What I want to tell you, get into this word, dive into this word and hold on it for dear life. And no matter what the demonic prophecy, whether it's by a relative, whether it's by a boss, whether it's through a spouse, whether it's through a distant family member. Take that word and filter it with the word of God. I often refer to Philippians 4 and 6 when it talks about think of those things that are lovely, just pure and of a good report. 
Think on those things. And it says, casting down those things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And it says that my God can do all things, all things, all things. No one is exempt from the attack of the enemy. Because what I want to let you know that the enemy, he doesn't come to steal from a place that has no value. If we had two cards sitting unlocked and one card had an Apple iPhone sitting on the front seat and a purse sitting in the front seat and the other car had nothing sitting in the front seat seat. The thief would simply look through the window and he would go in the car that had something of value. What I want to let you know that the enemy of your faith is a thief. He is the father of lies and all he's doing is coming to tell you that you're not valuable, that your life isn't worth it, that God doesn't love you because if God loved you, this wouldn't be happening to you. But what I want you to know, it's happening to you because God loves you because sometimes, listen, God said to, to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And what I want you to let you know is that I don't care what the enemy is throwing at you. I don't care what level of depression that you, you must be in. God told Satan, you can take anything, but you can't take his life. And what I want you to know is that the enemy, he desires to sift you as wheat, but he can sift the things, but he can't take your life. Because just like God told Job that you can't take his life, you could take things that he has, but he can't take your life. But what the enemy will tell you is that God doesn't love you because this is what is happening. But what I want to tell you is that the things that were happening to Job is because God allowed them. But God, if he brought you to it, he's not going to allow it to take you out. What the enemy will tell you is that these thoughts, God doesn't love you because you wouldn't be in the valley. God doesn't love you because your lover wouldn't die. God doesn't love you because you wouldn't have lost a job. God doesn't love you because you wouldn't have got sick. What I want to tell you is that these momentary afflictions are only for a moment. They're only for a moment. But if you, if you hold on, you will reap if you faint not. See, no one is exempt from the attack of the enemy. Because like I said in my example, if a thief saw a car and one car had an Apple iPhone in it and a purse sitting in the front seat and the other car had nothing going in the front seat, he would go to the car that had something of value. If the enemy is attacking you day in and day out, that is because he perceives something of value. But what his job is to convince you that you're not valuable. His job is to tell you that you don't have an Apple iPhone Max in your front seat. He's trying to tell you that you have a throwaway phone, a burner phone. He's trying to convince you that you got the $29 burner phone when you got an Apple Max phone in your car. He wants to tell you that there is nothing that you have. But I'm telling you, a thief doesn't come to rob an empty building. A thief normally scouts out the things of value. So if the enemy is attacking you, it's because he's seen that you are valuable. But I, what I want to let you know is that if the enemy is attacking you, that God's word is greater than him. God's word is greater than him, but God will never override your will. So if you take that thought and you consume it in your bosom, and if you consume it in your bosom long enough, you will contemplate it long enough that you will want to go into a cave like Elijah and said that I was going to die. So what the, what the man of God did, he was, he separated himself from his friends and his support system. So don't forsake the assembly of one another. Then addition, he began to contemplate and said that no one is going through what I've been through. But I want to tell you that in, in Ecclesiastes, God said there is nothing new under the sun. So everything that you've been through, someone already has been through. Through every problem, through every problem that you have, there is a solution inside of every problem. There is no problem too big for your God. There is no circumstance that God can't undo. There is nothing that is going to harm you. When God's hand is on you, because what God's blessed, he can't curse. But what you can do is curse yourself and take those thoughts and meditate on them. Stop meditating on those demonic prophecies and begin to put the word of God on them. Begin to apply the filter. Many of us think that the enemy's devices are these big swords and these magical mythical methods. What God, what the enemy uses is thoughts. He uses the power of perversion. What God, power of persuasion, excuse me. What the enemy will do is say, God doesn't really want you to have this. So partake in this. He that have begun a good work, he is faithful to perform it. And don't let, listen, it said let patience have its perfect work. 
See, you're going to have to go through something to get something. So what Elijah did, he went into the cave. And then he began to say that no one is going through what I am going through. But when the angel of God came and spoke to Elijah, what he said, listen, brother man, I got 7,000 people that haven't bowed to Baal. I have other people that haven't bowed to the enemy. Listen, you're not alone. But if the enemy can get you to take that thought, to make you think I'm the only one that is going through this. You will feel alone. Because see, the word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The word says, I will stick closer to you than any brother, even to the end of the age, even to the end of this dispensation. He will stick with you. But what the enemy will do is make you think that God doesn't love you. Because if God loved you, you wouldn't be going through. What I want to let you know is that you that are going through is because God has trusted you. Like he said, have you considered my servant Job? This persecution, don't let it be a hindrance that you make a mountain that calls you to take your life. I come against the spirit of suicide and the spirit of depression. But because what God says for the spirit of heaven is he gave you a garment of praise. I dare you to begin to give God some glory. I dare you to think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. I dare you to look through the annals of history and see the things that God has brought you through. And if you do that, I promise you what you think on will change because you'll begin to see that God has taken you from one victory to another victory to another victory to another victory. Because if you have breath in your body and if you can call on the name of the Lord, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, Yeshua, Yah, the I am that I am, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sikhanu. If you can call on the name of the Lord, he said, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you're in trouble, if the enemy is making you think that I want to crawl in the, a cave and that I want to take my life. And yes, see, the enemy attacked the man of God. So just because you are a man of God, just because you move under the power of God doesn't mean that the enemy won't attack you. But the way the enemy attack you, part of the enemy's scheme is for you to go off by yourself and get all alone. Part of the enemy's scheme is for you to contemplate the thought that no one else is going through it. What I want you to know is that the word will get you through it every time, but you got to think on the goodness of Jesus. You got to enter his courts with thanksgiving in your heart. You got to get a praise on your lip. You got to get a dance in your spirit because he said for the spirit of heaven, if I will give you the garment of praise. God said, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but power, love and a sound mind. What I want to let you know that those thoughts are actually some of our spirits that are trying to connect to you. So I detached that spirit. I detached that thought. I Move you from that negative emotion because guess what? Psychi psychiatrists, they're good to talk to. Doctors are good to go to. But what they will do is get you to talk out your problems. And what they will do is get you to medicate your problems. I'm talking about going to the guy that can fix your problem. I'm talking about going to the man that I know that can resolve every issue. I'm talking about going to the man that took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and said, where is thy sting? Where is thy victory? I'm talking about taking your burdens and leave them there. Stop picking up the thing that God has delivered you from because no one is exempt. So I go to church to fortify my mind. I go to church to make myself more aware of the enemy's devices and its attacks and its tricks. Because what the enemy has told people, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But the whole world is framed by the power of God's words. So words definitely will hurt you because words will kill you because the man of God took the word in his bosom and wanted to kill himself. Stop believing the enemy saying that there's just words because words have power because words are spiritual containers. Well, so when someone says a word that doesn't apply to you, just begin to say, I don't receive it. What the enemy says, he's a liar. So if the enemy says that you're not going to make it, you got to tell yourself that I am going to make it. If the enemy says that you're left for dead, you're going to say that I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. If the enemy says that you're down, you must begin to say that I'm up. If the enemy says that you got 
got to climb the mountain. You got to begin to say that I can speak to the mountain. If the enemy says this is in my family, you got to understand that God said you can break generational curses. If the enemy says that you ought to be afraid, you must say that God didn't give me the spirit of fear. If the enemy says that I am heavy, you got to begin to say that God has given me the garment of praise. Whatever the enemy says to you, it is a lie. But if he can get you alone, and if you can get you contemplating those negative thoughts, he can make you want to take your life. If the enemy came after Elijah, if the enemy came after Jesus after fasting for 40 days, he is coming after you, but he only comes after things that he perceives as valuable. So don't think that these attacks are because you're not valuable. These are attacks because you are valuable. I'm not against going to a psychiatrist. I am not going against going to a doctor. But what I want to tell you that I know the chief psychiatrist. I want to let you know that I know the chief physician. What I want to let you know, I know the person that can heal your spirit. Because only God can fix that hole in your life. See, what medicine will do is get you to a position that your spirit can become numb. That your body can literally be like a zombie. I want to take you to somebody that can put some booster cables on your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions. I want to introduce you to somebody named Jesus Christ. And whatever you're going through, and I'm not talking about people that don't have no real anointing because anybody can call themselves a prophet. Anybody can call themselves an apostle. Anybody can call themselves an evangelist. But I want you to become a fruit inspector. Stop hanging around with people that have no anointing because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Stop hanging around with people that don't read the word because it said it is the engrafted word that will save your soul. What I want to tell you is put down all of the news feeds. I want you to get out of Instagram. I want you to get off of Periscope. What I want you to do is get in God's book because God's book is more valuable than Facebook. Facebook is nice, but the social network will make you anti-social because what the social network will do is cause you to read and look at things about people's lives that may not be even true. But I want to introduce you to somebody that is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want freedom in your mind, if you want freedom in your spirit, he says, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So your freedom is literally just one action step away. You're one action step away from being free from the hand of the enemy. Go to a place where your soul can be fed because God, listen, the devil doesn't mind you going to church. He just minds you living for God. The devil doesn't mind you quoting scripture. He minds you believing scripture. See, because see, the enemy knows scripture. Witches know scripture. Kanye is holding church services. Aretha Franklin came out of the church. Michael Jackson knew of God. What I'm trying to tell you, my favorite man, DMX, he prayed on every album. It's because he knew of God. But see, the thoughts and the enemy had his hooks in him. So even though he wanted to go far, there was limitations on his hooks. Because he was, he was bound, because he was taking up, he was picking up some of the things that sin had. Listen, 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your faults and cleanse you. And that's not verbatim, but that's just high level what it is. If you confess it, he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God's blood has never lost, never will lose its power. He made one sacrifice so that you don't have to be bound by a thought. Cutting happened in the Bible. Yes, cutting happened in the Bible. Bipolar behavior and manic behavior happened in the Bible. But when God came, he cast out the spirit that was oppressing these people. So I don't want to let you know. You got to begin to speak against the spirit that is speaking against your spirit. Some of you have been under depression for so long. and You've been oppressed for so long that you think that is a part of you. God comes so that you don't have to be bound. And God gave his blood so you don't have to take on 
the spirit of depression, the spirit of suicide, the spirit of high anxiety. You don't have to take on those spirits and you don't have to believe me, but I want to let you know that those are spirits and words are spiritual containers. And if you take those demonic negative prophecies and begin to meditate on them, the spirit that's in those words will begin to attach to your spirit. And when they attach to your spirit, and if you meditate on it long enough, you'll believe that it is part of you and you'll believe that there is no hope. Because as I said in the beginning, Elijah was a very anointed prophet of God that performed miracles. But he took the words of Jezebel and he meditated on them. And he isolated himself in a cave. And he began to mutter and meditate in his mind that no one is going through what I am going through, that I am alone. But when he spoke with God, God reminded him that he was not alone that there are other people that has been through the very thing that he was going through. But I wanna let you know that no one is exempt from attacks, but you're not alone. Everyone goes through seasons when the heart can be broken. Everyone goes through valleys, but he's God in the valley and he's God in the mountain. People will have sickness, People will get diseases, but God will give you victory. One of the greatest things that God ever gave me is when he taught me how to count it all joy again. And that's my prayer for anybody that watches this video now or later. Count it all joy again. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. But for many of us, morning have come, but we haven't let go of the thought to weeping. For many of us, the answer has come, but we haven't let go of the hurt and the pain of the past. For many of us, salvation is next to you, but you are unwilling because God said that it is the gift of God. It's a gift. So you don't got to work for this joy. You don't have to work for this salvation. You just got to ask God and receive it. Now, asking God to come into your heart is just one thing. You, you still need to be baptized. Because when you get baptized, that is the watery grave where it gives you the opportunity to leave those things that are bearing you down. But see, God told Paul that there was a thorn in his flesh that he wasn't going to take from him because his grace was sufficient. So what I'm telling you, the gift of God is free, but that don't mean you gotta, don't have to fight to maintain your freedom. Because once you receive the things of God, you become valuable. So like the iPod and the purse that sits in the front seat, the enemy is peering through the window saying, God, can I have a chance to try to take the things that I've given to you? The things that God has given to you, the enemy can't take from you without you relinquishing them. Because just like Job, he got to the point that he cursed the day that he was born. And then God came and talked to Job in the 30th chapter and told him to man up. Where were you when I placed the sun, the moon, and the stars? Where were you when I caused the waters to not to come but so far where were you when i caused the hail and the storm where were you listen stop contemplating whether god can fix it and just know that god can fix it don't return to the thing that god has delivered you from because when you do that thing becomes greater because your spirit is open Stop partaking and picking up things that we know are sin. Because what God has blessed, the enemy can't curse. But the most dangerous weapon is a thought. So God cleared the thoughts of the people and let them begin to filter those negative words and those negative thoughts through the filter of your word. Because I believe it in my heart that God's word is true. 
and that everything else that doesn't line up to the word of God, I'm not going to receive. But if you take a thought, if you take it in and allow it to come out of you, that's what begins to kill you. So the word says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but it's what comes out of him that defiles him. So what I want to let you know, how can you take in a thought and let it come out of you? Because words are spiritual containers. Words are power. So what the enemy does is take a thought and gets it in your mind. And you take that thought and you put it into your belly. And you put it in your belly long enough that it gets into your heart your spirit and what you begin to do is speak the words from the thoughts so the thought went into you but you allow words to come out of you and when you allow words to come out of you you have now given birth to whatever that thought was stop giving birth to the enemy's plans stop giving birth to the enemy's plans it's okay thoughts are going to come but put the word on them and know that the enemy is a liar. He's a liar. He's after your life. He doesn't care if you sit in the pulpit. He doesn't care if you're just on the pew. He is going to attack anything that carries the glory of God because he no longer is capable of carrying the glory of God. He is going to attack anyone and anything that worships and proclaims the good news of the gospel because he can no longer worship and proclaim the good news of the gospel. He's lost his estate. So because he has lost his estate, what he does is project things onto you that God never intended for you. So pull down those things that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And don't isolate yourself. And don't contemplate on it. Because if you isolate yourself and you contemplate the words, you will want to kill yourself just like Elijah did. But I speak against that spirit today. Let God fill your heart. And you might be saying, well, Michael, I don't know how to get rid of these thoughts. Michael, I've been having these thoughts for so long, I don't want, I don't know what to do. The way to get rid of a thought is replace it with another one. That's really how you get rid of a thought, is replace it with another one. So even though you may be going through, you have to begin to say, I'm going to make it. You're going to have to begin to say that I am a winner. You're going to have to begin to say that I am more than a conqueror. You're going to have to begin to say that I am victorious. You're going to have to begin to say that I am a winner. And you keep saying it. 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 And to the victory gets in your spirit. I've been there. I've been there when I felt so low. I've been there. Where the voices said, just kill yourself. I've been there. So I'm not talking about something that I don't know. Because I've been through it. I've walked through it. I had the enemy attack my mind. I had the enemy attacking me in my dreams. I had the enemy attacking me when I would daydream and wander. I had the enemy attacking me from all sides. But see, the enemy was attacking me because there was something of value. So I'm not telling you something that I don't know. Because see, when I lost a loved one, the enemy would attack me. And he would say, why don't you just join them? When I lost my father, the enemy would attack me because he would say, well, God was a healer. Why didn't he heal my father? But see, what the word says that once appointed a man to die, then after that is judgment. And Psalms the word tells man to number his, his days. The word says from the dust you turn, from the dust you will go. So my father passing was just a normal part of the cycle of man. 
Well, see, what the enemy was trying to tell me is that God didn't love me because he wouldn't allow my father to die. Well, the enemy was trying to say that God didn't love you because he wouldn't allow your child to die. But what I want to tell you is that is just the natural cycle of life and you're going to mourn, you're going to cry, you're going to have heavity. But what I'm going to tell you that one night when I was laying in my bed and when the enemy began to attack my mind, there was something inside of me because I had fortified myself with enough word that something in my spirit began to yell, you can't have me. You can't have me. Something in my spirit began to rise up and just to say that devil, you are a liar. There was something inside of me that began to rise up. But reason there was something inside of me that could rise up, that's because I deposited the word already. I already had a reservoir of word that I could pull on. I had already put enough in my bank account that I could pull on it. So you got to go to church and read this word and study this word and keep it in your ear because you got to have a reservoir, reservoir of, of something. You got to have enough stashed away. You got to have enough Jesus stashed away so that when the enemy comes, you can pull out your Trump card, the J-E-S-U-S-C-H-R-I-S-T card. Pull out that J-C card. And say, that's not what God says. That's not what God called me to be. One moment of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. But you must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you don't believe that God can favor you, if you don't believe that God will reward you, you won't diligently seek him. But what I want to let you know is that the devil will say that God doesn't love you because all of these things would never happen to you. What I want you to know that God is not going to allow the enemy to take your life. But if you pick up the enemy's devices, you can take your own life. So I'm not saying the thoughts that won't come. But I want to encourage you to fortify yourself in the Lord. Fortify yourself. So I go to church. So I don't have to contemplate these thoughts because no one is exempt. And I tell you, the fiery darts will continue to come until you cross over to the other side. But, but I want to encourage you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the weapons may prosper. The weapons may form. But they will not prosper long term. Yeah. I said the weapons may prosper. Yes. Because in a season... The enemy can wound you in a season. Yeah, he can hit you in a season. He can, he, he, he can hit you, but it won't take you out because God will keep you. He will keep you. We serve a prayer answering, keeping God. But you got to believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I want to encourage you to seek after God. Go hard after the God because there is an enemy that is looking to sift you as wheat. But like God told Job, you can't have his life. The enemy can't have it. If you need prayer, I'll be more than happy to pray for you. But I know that there are plenty of places that you can go to where people will pray the words of faith over your life. But I want to leave you with this thought. The word says, physician, heal thyself. There is no super Holy Ghost. We all got the same Holy Ghost. It's just that some of us spend more time learning how to use the weapon that we have. But in order for you to get proficient in the ways of God, you have to spend time with God. But this is Michael Gibson, and that's why I go to church. It's because I don't want to contemplate those thoughts. I want to pull them down. I want to encourage you, if you're not a, a Bible believer, but if you have thoughts of suicide and depression, just go read Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 6. Take it down to verse 19 and read it over and over and over again. Read it until you believe it. Because it is the engrafted word that will save 
your soul. Another scripture that I would encourage you to read is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Another passage that if you're feeling low, read Psalms 91 and keep reading it. Because if you abide under the shadow of his wing, there is safety. Another passage to read is Psalms 27. Just know that God is your rock and he's your refuge and he's the buckler and he is the lifter up of your head. So if you feel downtrodden, just know that God loves you and I love you too. If this message has blessed you, I ask that you share it out. It's Michael Gibson and it's why I go to church.